Good morning, everybody. You are currently listening to A Tall Girls Podcast, hosted by a tall girl named India. I hope everyone who's tuning in today is doing super fantastic. Before I get into this episode, I do want to say, make sure you follow me on my socials at A Tall Girls Podcast on Instagram, TikTok, and Pinterest so that you can stay up to date on all of the latest podcast episodes and catch a glimpse of my everyday life. Also, feel free to leave me a review and let me know how tall you are. I'm genuinely curious. Everything is going to be linked in the description. Also, please sign up for my newsletter. Thank you. Today we are recording with the new microphone. Was I supposed to record with this last week? Yes. But if you're anything like me, it takes you a while to open packages, okay? I wanted to get like a windscreen filter, whatever thingy to put on top of this microphone so it can filter out, you know, the unnecessary air that comes out when you say certain words. Um, So I did actually get that in time to record with this last week. I just didn't open it. Um, So yeah, I opened it and hence why we are here with the new microphone. So super excited to be recording with this. I'm hoping that the audio comes out good um, when I edit this tomorrow, because if it doesn't, I'm gonna have to re-record an entire podcast episode, but I tested it out before recording this and it sounded like it was fine. It sounded like it was good. So I think I'm like 87% sure that we're okay. Also, how do you guys feel about reality TV? I've been watching Love Island. (laughs) I'm sorry. I just can't believe I'm actually saying this out loud. It just feels so embarrassing doing that. But I've been watching Love Island UK. No, I'm not from the UK. I'm in fact from the US. But I have, well, I don't have Hulu. My sister has Hulu. And I only really watch Hulu. I don't know. I don't have... I don't really use other streaming apps, to be honest with you guys, and I don't know where the U.S. is streaming, but I know that Love Island U.S. is not streaming on Hulu, but Love Island U.K. is streaming on Hulu, and I've been watching that for the past couple of weeks and keeping up with what people are saying on TikTok, (laughs) and I don't know, like, as per usual with these types of shows, and a lot of it is obviously done on purpose, there's just a lot of stupid drama and people repeating the same stuff over and over and over again. But I don't know, for some reason nowadays, like, because beforehand, I just find it so annoying. But nowadays, I'm kind of enjoying it. Maybe it's because my life is like a little bit settled, a little bit more settled right now. And, you know, I'm not dealing with the whole drama of school and the tiredness of school and trying to manage everything. Like right now, I'm just focusing on work. And, you know, there's like stability with that, which is good, which is really good for my emotional state, for my emotional and mental health. But, you know, every now and then it doesn't hurt to get a little bit of flavor when it comes to the whole drama thing, but watching other people's drama, not having drama in my own life. (laughs) So I don't know, watching that has helped satisfy, you know, that little, ooh, I want to see some drama. So maybe that's why I've been enjoying it. Um, But if you watch Love Island UK, hit me up. Maybe we can chat about it. I don't know. Nobody else around, like immediately around me is watching it. So, and I feel the need to want to talk about it sometimes. So if you're watching Love Island UK and you want to talk about it too, hit me up, send me a DM and we're going to chat about it. Also, I just want to say before I get into the topic of this episode, please make sure you are keeping up with politics. Okay. If you're in the US, I should say, please make sure you're keeping up with politics. Um, Election season is pretty much here. Um, November of 2024, November, so November of this year, just a few months away, is when we're going to have to cast our votes. And I just, you know, want to make sure everybody knows what's going on. I'm not telling you what decision to make. I'm just saying keep informed so you can make a decision that works best for you. And if you are able to and you haven't yet, make sure you register to vote. And yeah, stay educated, stay abreast on what's going on because your decision well obviously everybody's collective decision but you know each decision matters and it can definitely affect the lives of a lot of other people so make sure you stay informed that's all i'm saying and make sure you're registered to vote and let's see what happens in november (laughs) all right so today's topic of discussion is over consumption so over consumption is basically excessive purchase of things that aren't really necessary for you to live essentially 
So what does that look like? One of the biggest examples that I see on the app is those little refrigerator organizer things or those kitchen organizer things. So they people purchase these organizers for like their food and their spices and seasonings and stuff like that that may have labels or just make the place look aesthetically pleasing. And what they do is that when they purchase their food, they take their food out of their original packages like let's say eggs or um, bread or even like spices and seasonings. They take the stuff out of the original packages and then they put it in the new organizers that they purchased. And I'm like, okay, that's interesting. But I don't know. I didn't really think too much of it because I'm like, if that's your thing, you do it. But people on the app are saying that's a little bit much, which I can understand because These foods are already in their own packages. Why are you taking them out of their packages to put them in other packages? (laughs) But that's just like one of the examples of like you're purchasing things that you don't necessarily need because the food already comes in their original packages. Another example, TikTok made me buy it. Like especially with home decor and stuff. Yes, I'm a big fan of making your home like feel like it's your home and making it look like it's your home, making it look like you know, how you want it to look like. But there are just certain things like you don't need to have three lamps in the same vicinity. (laughs) You don't need to have three vases on your coffee table. So something like that is also another example. And clothes. Clothes is a major one. And we're going to get into that today. Overconsumption is a massive topic of discussion these days. And I definitely believe that this affects the tall girl community, especially with tall fashion creators. Don't get me wrong. It's amazing to use your platform to educate others on what's out there. But sometimes I feel like the frequent hauls and the frequent try-ons are a bit excessive. And I'm not really just referring to tall fashion creators that goes for all fashion creators all fashion influencers and obviously no tea no shade because that's literally like their job or their hobby because they're part of the fashion space they have to do things related to fashion they have to you know actually get clothes actually get products actually get like shoes and jewelry and stuff like that to be able to create their content and to be able to get paid potentially to do what they do. So like I said before, no tea, no shade to them because that's how they do their thing. I just think that it's also important to talk about the perspective of the person on the other side who is watching and consuming this content. Especially as tall women, we tend to convince ourselves like, oh my gosh, I need to buy as many pairs of these long pants as possible because I don't know if I'm ever going to find any like these again. And then the next day we're stressing over which one of the 20 pairs of pants we have to wear to our night out. And it's like, we don't need that many pairs. You know what I mean? We don't need that many pairs of pants. And because it's already a struggle to find pants that are long enough for us. I believe that, you know, because of that, we have a tendency to go a little bit overboard every time we find a pair of pants that's actually long enough because, you know, it's that fear that's in the back of our mind that's like, what if these sell out and I can't find any more? Oh my gosh, I'm not going to have enough pairs of pants to, you know, hold myself and that are long enough and fit my style. Getting a bunch of clothes that we don't necessarily need out of that fear that we're not going to be able to find anything that will fit us, will fit our length is an example of overconsumption. Online shopping as a tall woman is a big contributor to overconsumption as well. It's an extensive trial and error process where if the item doesn't fit us, we return it and then reorder something else, which can lead us to overconsume and spend lots of money. And don't even get me started on trends. Shopping for clothes as a tall woman is already hard enough, but then shopping for trending clothes? there's really no point in even trying. I don't know, a lot of these things like with the trends, with the online shopping or just, you know, seeing like a pair of pants, a tall pair of pants just being like, ooh, I should probably grab multiple of these. I will say personally has definitely affected me as a, well, a recent graduate, still trying to process the fact that I graduated from college 
as a recent graduate who is going to go back to school and isn't really making a full-time income, it's definitely a stressor on my part because, well, not anymore, but it used to be is what I will say because there's just this major feeling of FOMO. And it's not just me. I think that I'm also speaking for a lot of other people that there's this major FOMO or fear of missing out where it's like, oh, if I don't take part in this trend or, oh, if I don't get this now or get that now, like, I may never be able to get it again. And then, oh, no, my life is going to fall apart. I mean, obviously, I'm exaggerating, but FOMO leads to a lot of people making really bad decisions, especially bad financial decisions. Clothing, I mean, it can get out of hand, but I don't think it's as bad as what other people do, like, you know, doing these a bunch of trips and that gets them into a lot of credit card debt. FOMO can definitely get people to make really bad financial decisions. A lot of people, for a lot of people, this can turn into an addiction. Going back to the fashion creators, because like the fashion creators and fashion influencers, they do play a heavy role in overconsumption. For the tall fashion creators out there, it's important to educate others on overconsumption and how to combat it. It could be secondhand shopping as a tall woman, upcycling and DIY, buying from sustainable brands that are affordable, <laughs> building a capsule wardrobe, even showing your closet cleanouts because in this economy, it's critical to be aware of your purchasing habits. Shopping your closet is also something that I've been seeing in the tall fashion community lately on Instagram. And I do want to ask, how do you feel about that? Because clothing can be a touchy topic for tall women. How would that look for you? How would you feel about shopping your closet? And, you know, overconsumption is not necessarily just a thing of breaking your bank account and affecting your mental health and stuff. Because, I mean, yes, it can definitely affect your finances and, you know, fear of missing out can give you anxiety and stuff like that. But it also has a really bad impact on the world around us. It can have a bad environmental impact. It can promote unsustainable production practices. I mean, it can lead to a lot of bad things that can negatively impact our society. And especially in this job market, I don't think we need anything else going south. Hence why I'm bringing up all these different methods like secondhand shopping, upcycling and DIY, even shopping your closet. I may, may, should I? Should I? Will I? Should I do a separate episode on shopping your closet? I think that that's something that's very interesting and something that I honestly really want to consider doing. Maybe it could be like a shop my closet with me type of episode, but I may consider doing a separate episode on that. I don't know. You guys let me know. Is that something that you would want to hear? But yeah, education on overconsumption for a tall woman is very important. Because that feeling of FOMO when seeing things on the internet like hauls can tempt us to overconsume. Especially with tall clothes being priced on the higher side, we need to make better spending decisions. And, you know, it's not just with clothes, it's with a lot of other things too, as I've said. So I just wanted to bring this topic up to you guys, um, especially because, I mean, seeing on my feed I'm seeing on my feed a lot these past few weeks like a lot of hauls a lot of try-ons and stuff like that because you know the main thing with the tall community the tall women community is clothing and there are a lot of tall fashion creators out there and they have a lot of followers as well and it's like a lot of the same people that are following these different creators so I just wanted to bring up the topic of overconsumption in regards to the tall fashion community and my take on it and potential strategies on how to combat it. So yeah, I think I'm gonna end this episode here. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it and I appreciate you. As always, feel free to hit me up on my socials and let me know what you thought about this episode and let me know your thoughts on overconsumption. Are you trying to lean more towards underconsumption? Are you struggling with overconsumption? I want to hear your take on this as well. It's This is a very interesting topic and, you know, it should be interesting to see how it will go, you know, from here in the whole social media world and what they're talking about with that on TikTok. So thank you again for tuning in. 
I thank you so, so much for making it to the end and following me and interacting with me. It really does mean a lot. And yeah, I'll catch you in the next one. Good night and goodbye.